Very welcome here. My name is Staffan Widingen, and I work as a program manager for Resifarm Cellization Project. And I will give you a presentation of our journey through this. Uh, a little bit about Resifarm. We are a leading contract manufacturer with, uh, from 1995. At that time, we have our own products, but we uh, sold them 2007 and become a 100% CDMO organization. We have the headquarters in Stockholm, outside uh, Le Jordbro, a little bit outside Stockholm. And we have about 400 customers. This include both customers for development and uh, manufacturing and packaging. So uh, I think everybody is prepared. So. Everybody knows about cellization, I guess so, and why we do this. It's to prevent falsified solutions. And also that we will protect the patient from falsified medicines. In principle, it's to print a 2D code on a, and a unique serial number on all licensed drug products, and this goes for the prescribed products, not the OTC. Uh, it also could include aggregation. I will come back a little bit about that later on, uh, which will be able then to have a track and trace system. Uh, and also, it's also required in Europe to have uh, tamper evidence. So a little bit about the history or the statistics from uh, the falsified medicine. As you can see, it's about 30 to 40 percent of all medicine in development countries that are counterfeit, and also that 7 to 15 percent are developed from e development countries are falsified, which is a quite unique and, and high number. Uh, I will also say that this is not include the uh, internet. So it's only the such a legal supply chain. And as you know, our leading stores are US coming in November 2017 and then Europe in February 2019. And this map shows a little bit about the countries who have already implemented sterilization and also the countries that will implement and as you can see, Europe is in the end of, uh, beginning of 2019. Uh, for us now, the next country will be Saudi Arabia, coming in uh, March 2017. And then later on next year, it will be US. So what is the key challenge and considerations? Uh, it's very complex, I can say that. Uh, not f related to the machines, but for the software and, and uh, s connected to, to the machines. Uh, and I will go through a little bit about what we have considered most important. Uh, as Resi Farm is a uh, global company uh, with uh, sites all over Europe and also we have customers all over the world. That is a big challenge. Um, we have the different market requirements which I showed on the previous slide and we know that there are other countries coming also and there are some countries that has postponed, for example Brazil and also about the serialization number generation. Uh, there could be customers who want to generate them by themselves, but we will prefer to generate them by our own system. Technical considerations, software requirements for serialization. We work together with uh, two vendors for equipment and software for what the level one, two, and three. And we have another uh, vendor or supporting uh, unit for level four, uh, where we will have all our 
serialization number uh, generated. The level four we have chosen is uh, Tracelink, and they have a cloud-based uh, system, which is quite uh, flexible for, for a contract manufacturer. Also, how to provide the numbers to the customer, and also in case that we need to report them to the authorities. There will be customer requirements, but we try to avoid or prevent that as much as possible, and also later on aggregation requirements. Aggregation is not a requirement in, in uh, Europe for the time being, uh, but it is a requirement, will be a requirement in US from 2023 and also in China. Uh, time scales, even if it's free, uh, about two and a half years now until uh, Europe will come live, uh, we need to prepare. Uh, as I said, we have about 200 customers that we need now to take on board, and we can't do that in the last quarter of 2018. We have to start now. Also, we have to take in consideration the US deadline, 2017. First step is serialization, and then later on come aggregation. There are also customers that wants to have aggregation included, even if it's not a legal uh, requirement. <coughs> uh, as I said, we will have a standard solution that we have to implement uh, across our production lines, and that could also vary depending on, on of, uh, if you maybe have to rebuild or, or re, re uh, yeah have a new building for, for this. <coughs> and also, if there will be new regulations during this time, we have to be prepared for that. And also very important to train staff. And that's why we also try to have a seamless process for this. As mentioned, we have about 250 customers for manufacturing and packaging. We will have 100 production lines. Uh, I will say pr production uh, equipment here. It's about 75 lines. But together, because there are several types of equipment we will install. And we also have 15 sites. All of them are in Europe at the moment, which a little bit make it easier. <coughs> So, potential impact to being underprepared. Well, miss, missing the U European and the US deadlines. I mean, US deadlines is only one year in front of us. Uh, so there it's very important, and also for the Saudi Arabia, which is in March. We have some sites supplying Saudi Arabia. There could be potential risk for, for uh, product shortage due to it that you are not allowed to sell products after February 2019 without serial number. Uh, of course, you can build a uh, stock for, for, uh, before that, but we, we have said we try to have business as usual. You can lose business due to that you don't are in compliance with the market requirements. And also, you can have they can have impact on efficiency. We know that the the uh, efficiency will go down in the beginning after introduction of serialization. Uh, so in the beginning, we will have a loss in efficiency. Uh, costly downtime. It could also be reputational damage, and also could be waste of products that we misprint or make errors in the beginning. So what to look into for a CDMO? Well, we, as we are a CMO, CDMO, we have to understand the responsibility of part of the pharmaceutical supply chain, as we have to also take the customer's uh, requirements in consideration, in consideration. We have experience from serialization to the Asian markets, uh, China, South Korea, but also Turkey, uh, we also have uh, some experience from. Uh, we want to have a dedicated, implemented, uh, robo robust serialization solution. We also work with proactive plans to see that we have uh, 
that we can fi uh, find the future challenge in regulation. We, we have a function called uh, radar, which then should be to find out uh, news from the different market markets. And we will now work with a fully compliant standard solution to simplify compliance across uh, the multi-geographic locations. Uh, we have taken this decision to have a standard solution that will offer, that will make it easier for us and for also for the customer. And we will also have a cost-sensitive approach, which will minimize the upfront investment. We will actually don't require any upfront investment. We will, will have we will have what we call a fee for service. So our standard solution. We will print the 2D barcode and with the human readable text. We will use a label as a temper evidence, a transparent label uh, for the cartoons. Uh, we will also management, you, uh, we will take the responsibility of the management of the sale number, both concerning generation and also reporting. We will, we have uh, equipment and software uh, from uh, we have chosen uh, Marchesini for the machines and uh, Sea Vision for the software, which include the packaging machine. Also, we have a, what we call a rework station if you need to do that after you have finalized your packaging, and also the, the data management and reporting to the uh, our level four system, and then from that to the customer, and also maybe to the authorities. Oh, sorry. So uh, here's a little bit about uh, our history. We actually started the project in May 2013. So it's actually three and a half year now since. And uh, here is a list of all these, uh, what we call milestones mm -hmm. during this journey. Um, we, uh, this year we have started now to also make uh, what we call press release related to, to uh, the milestones. Um, the first one uh, was actually in um, February this year, where we uh, where we presented the uh, March. Sorry, uh, that we have a presentation of the project, and now also later on our pricing model. Uh, here now in October. We will have uh, we have started a, the, the our showcase line, which is placed in Fontaine in one of our French sites. This uh, line will be dedicated to visit uh, for customers to visit, and it will show our standard solution. So, and this is a big step now. The next steps, well, we are currently working now with around 200 customers, and as you understand, we need to take them on board now to, to have them connected to the level four system. Uh, w in, the, in our pricing model, we will have, uh, this will be fr free of charge until uh, the requirement will come um, effective in, in uh, November for US and in uh, February for uh, 2019 for U uh, Europe. And also, now we have to install all this equipment in the, in the facilities, uh, sites we have. It's, as I said, it's about 75, and the lead time for one machine is around six to 10 months, depending on type of machines. So you can understand it's a, uh, quite a lot of machines that we have to install during this, during this two and a half year. As I mentioned, we have already done, uh, we are doing a uh, serialization for uh, China. Uh, this is also our site in Fontaine. That's why we also choose that as the uh, showcase line. Uh, and they have adapted a solution for, for uh, China and uh, it was quite successful and um, costs were also minimized through efficient collaborative efforts. And the result so far, 57 serialized batches since February 2014. 
That's it. Any question? Yes? The question was, what is included in the six to 10 months? It's the from ordering to the FIT, the factor acceptance test. Uh, and the difference, if you have a carton machine, a standard carton, it's six months. But if you have a bottle solution, it's around 10, 10 months. Any further questions? Yes? The question was if there will be a price for serialized product and for non-serialized product. Yeah, there we, we will have a fee for the serialized product, which will be w one certain amount for the first two years and uh, decreased after the two uh, year three and four, and then it will be part of the cost of goods. And that's independent of product volume and things like that. Okay, thank you very much.